So I thought I'd make a video about the structure of the base of my machine. As uh, one of you <laughs> noticed and mentioned in the comments, you saw a little vibration in uh, one of my first cuts. And uh, so I thought I'd start this uh, discussion um, to help anyone else who's trying to maybe design a base and uh, maybe learn from uh, what I did. Uh, so this is uh, basically the... the design I put together. Uh, I decided to use square tubing. Um, another option out there is to use 80-20 extrusion to make the base. Um, at least for me, I found that to be pretty expensive uh, just because I, you know, I can't get the volume discount for buying 80-20 that uh, other <laughs> institutions can. So uh, I decided to make mine out of hot rolled square tubing. And uh, essentially, these are the dimensions. Uh, it was uh, tough to... I was trying to balance, obviously, the size of the machine, its weight, and its mobility. I have a garage shop in a residence, and so I need this thing to move around. So that's why I chose to use these casters. Um, and then I have these... Uh, they're, they're sort of my go-to shop feet, and they're, they're actually hockey pucks. Uh, and so I can show you in detail uh, better in the real world of how those work. Um, another design detail here, if I go to the front view, uh, is that I sort of spanned the two pieces as they join here over the, the leg. Um, so it's just a little bit of design detail. And so... The other thing is that uh, I eventually chose a tubing thickness of 0 0.065 inch uh, thick. So it's relatively a light gauge. And my rationale there was, uh, you can see here in this spreadsheet, so these are basically the, the quantities and lengths in inches of the, all the stock that form the base. Uh, and then here's the, the pound per foot, how much, how much the steel weighs, essentially. So my... As I built it, it weighs about 71 pounds, just the steel. And then had I gone up uh, in size, it would have doubled the next uh, wall thickness up. And then uh, at 3 16 of an inch, which is what this 0.1875 is, is 180 pounds. And so obviously weight and stiffness are somewhat linear, but not always. Uh, so anyway, this is the... the uh, decision I made. And so maybe you'll uh, make a different one. Uh, but that's the one I made. So uh, yeah, uh, I'd like to yeah sh shout out to my friend uh, Lon for doing most of the welding and uh, donating the consumables and his machine time and his expertise, without which I would not have been able to uh, weld this thing together. Uh, so thanks, man. Um, so regarding stiffness, I think it could be a little bit stiffer now that I've been using it a little bit. Um, I'm thinking of having maybe some cross braces, maybe an X here in the middle, uh, or simply just add, uh, two more verticals here on, on the ends. Um, I'm not sure. It's easy enough to do. I, I've essentially painted it with an enamel rust-oleum from the hardware store with a little cheap roller brush. Uh, so I can easily scrape the paint off and weld some more pieces in. And I, I may do that depending on the vibration. Uh, and then I will say that once you add the spoil board on top, this whole top gets quite rigid. And so I am no problem with the rigidity there. I think it's just the connection between the top and the bottom. And then obviously on this bottom section, I, I've already placed OSB uh, down there and I am using it as a shelf. And the idea was to sort of essentially weigh it down and then that would help the stability of the machine since it is on wheels. And then I have a, a backup plan for adding adjustable hockey puck legs in the back should have should the need arise and so it's kind of nice to have the ability to to set level the uh machine obviously uh but as you can see i clearly favored mobility over over that feature 
And so maybe I'll make a different choice. So here's the bottom of the machine in real life. Um, you can see here, or at least maybe you can see a little bit, uh, how the, the posts are uh, spanned across that particular joint. Uh, that was just a welding detail we decided on. Uh, the feet here, these are the hockey puck feet. And so basically there's a carriage bolt from the bottom. I use a Forstner bit to uh, sculpt out a hole there so it countersinks, so there's no metal on the ground. And then it's sandwiched between two washers there, and then this lock bolt. And then there's a bolt that's welded inside uh, this foot on the underside of the plate there. Maybe I can get a shot. <laughs> there's basically a bolt in there. Uh, and then this, this entire bolt uh, goes up and down to uh, level the machine. And so in the back here, we have these uh, four inch casters, they're lockable. And uh, I made these mounting plates. And so the idea on the back end is to insert another plate between here and then have, have a, uh, another hockey puck adjustable foot if that needs to happen. So that's pretty much the the structure. I have some cutoffs here. This is the actual material. So this is 0 0.065 wall thickness tubing. It's hot rolled steel. I will say that even though the calculation says it should be about 72 pounds or so, it feels a lot more awkward when you're lifting it. Um, and then down here on the bottom, which is <laughs> Your typical shop mess. I just have some OSB making a shelf and then a compressor there just weighing it down. The idea was to use this as obviously as storage and then maybe even have a an enclosure for the for the PC. And then you can see on the underside here these bolts that are that are coming through are actually attaching this uh, uh, spoil board the bottom one to the uh, machine itself. And then uh, my e-stops are bolted to a fabricated plate there. You can see. So that's pretty much it for the machine. I will say that the this uh, electrical enclosure is bolted in three places to it. So this is one bolt. There's another, actually, there's another bolt mounting that right here and this is the main power coming into that enclosure and then it's also bolted in this third location you can't see it because the bolt comes from inside the enclosure so this last uh, this last bolt is left dangling in the wind but this case probably weighs you know a, a lot I don't know what it actually weighs but it sort of stiffens this corner of the, the machine significantly. So the main gantry system is, is heavily borrows from uh, CNC router parts design, but this is not actually a CNC router parts part. I, I fabricated this uh, plate, uh, which attaches the, the linear motion bearing to the gantry. So this is probably the most critical part of the build. Um, as far as the fabrication, and you can kind of see this is essentially how I did it. I, I initially printed out on paper the uh, part with the exact precise, precise placement of the holes. So the shape of the part is a little less critical than the placement of the holes because the, the holes essentially establish what what is a 90 degree uh, interaction between the, the post of the gantry and the linear motion bearings which attach in these four holes and these four holes. So as you can see over here. So basically making this plate um, obviously accurate 90 degrees really helps as well as I was able to drill both plates. I made this uh, jig and then uh, drilled through essentially both plates simultaneously so that they're exactly the same even if they're not perfectly square which i think they're pretty pretty darn close based on my tramming efforts so anyway 
uh, initially I had intended to uh, have this piece uh, water jet cut out of aluminum but I decided, <laughs> me being the masochist I am, I'd give it a shot and obviously it's quite easy to make it out of wood and then quite a bit harder to make it out of aluminum. So this is T6061 uh, aluminum and this is three quarter inch plate. So uh, it's pr pretty much done with a, a jigsaw around, around the edge and then uh, a drill press uh, for all the holes. I did have to buy a set of uh, uh, counter bores to uh, drill these holes. And that's about the only tooling I did had to buy. Um, so if, you, if you're familiar with CNC router parts design, their post is actually on the other side of this uh, plate. And so I had this extra room, so I decided to use it by putting the post on this side. I knew I wanted my, my spoil board to be 48 inches wide, and I knew my machine was going to be wider. And so, you know, it's nice to have this little gap where stuck crud can fall in. I do intend at some point to put a, a, some type of baffle here to reduce chips getting onto the linear rail. Um, so that's pretty much it. Same deal with the beam here. This is heavily borrows from CNC router parts design. Two linear motion bearings. These are probably the most expensive parts of the build is the linear motion bearings. Um, you know, the 8020 extrusion is sort of a fixed price commodity. Finding these uh, cheaply is difficult. And I think there are two um, standards. There's precision and then there's ultra precision. And ultra precision and precision gets very expensive, certainly at these lengths. So I can put a link uh, down below from the source that I got mine from. Um, they seem to be legit. Uh, I think it, I'd go <laughs> fall short of recommending, but I had a decent experience with them. It seemed seemingly a good price. So, um, I guess other parts. I also fabricated this plate. This is a pretty important piece. Um, once again, all the aluminum here that I machined is T6061. And so basically I made this top plate and, and this mounting plate. The uh, precision of these holes is obviously really critical. Um, as you can see, my, my little marking, I think that hole wandered a little. So, um, things like that. Um, I'm pretty proud, you can see there, the tolerance. I needed to make this tolerance between the, the gear rail and this plate pretty tight because I, I wanted to get a good uh, bite uh, on the from the pinion. You can probably see the pinion in there. So anyway, that was uh, that was a sweat worthy uh, gap there, making that. Um, I don't know if anything else is worth talking about. Um, I will say one more thing maybe about these uh, uh, angles. So originally this, this piece, this angle iron, was intended to be steel. And then I learned a hard lesson that steel angle iron is not 90 degrees. It's not even close. But aluminum actually is much more precise. And so this ended up being much thicker aluminum. And seems to be working pretty well. I basically only have four bolts here. And then, if you can barely see, but the, the hole is slotted. So that this entire... Um, piece can move laterally and uh, if it needs and then since this is 8020 this is attached obviously by these bolts and then so the 8020 can slide this way if needed and then both the linear motion bearing and the uh, gear rail are attached to the 8020 um, one thing I will note is that all of the 8020 that I uh, bought was of the, the metric standard. If you look at the two, you have metric and uh, uh, imperial sort of standards for the, the 8020. And the metric stuff seems a little beefier. It has more material in it. So that's what I bought. So I wanted to make this point a little clearer. So here's the uh, 8020 beam that I bought. 
Uh, so it's part number 408016. So that's 80 millimeters wide and 160 millimeters tall. And so on the fractional side of their catalog, they have an equivalent or nearly equivalent of a three by six. And this one is slotted face, and this is a smooth face, but I don't think that affects too much. Uh, so the dimensions are roughly the same, but when you look at them in uh, CAD, you'll see that the uh, uh, metric one, which is the one I bought here in green, is considerably larger than the red one, which is the, the fractional size. Um, so it's, you know, I think the same effect happens on the other pieces, like the side rails and my posts, but the effect is a little more subtle. So either way, I stuck with the metric sizes. Well, that's it for this video. Hopefully that's useful for somebody who's building a base. Um, we'll see if I make any modifications or if these vibrations uh, are too much to bear. Anyway, thanks for watching.